Harley. Derek Jones. Lisa Mooney. Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Minutes of 4-17-2019 regular session. I didn't have one correction, Suzanne, to point it out that it says waste or water, cheap waste or water, so it's okay. waste water. Um, it's corrected on the ones that you don't have to You don't have the cheap waste or? No. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. I move to pass the minutes from the council meeting of Wednesday, April 17th, 2017. There's a motion and a second to pass the minutes. Is there any other discussion or questions? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. <coughs> I'm going to jump into citizens' input. I would ask that um, I see a lot of people out here that I know is here for the same thing that we don't reinvent the wheel. I'm sure you've all talked and want to go, so we'll start out with, we'll go here in the front. Young man, do you have any citizens input? I saw you coming in, or are you just more than one to come to the meeting? No, I, I got a couple of things I want to State your name, please, change. for everybody. My name is Louis Borog. I live on Logan Street. Okay. Um, couple of things I like to have changed. Cleanup day, I know you have it in April and October. Why can't we have it once a month, the last last Friday of every month? That way, it'd be a lot easier on everybody. Bourbon has it, and Bourbon ain't no big on artists. They don't have no problem with it. Be, be a lot easier for to do that than to have it in uh, April and October. It makes a lot of sense. A lot of, a lot of people like to get rid of their stuff once a month. It'd be a lot easier. It, it helps for the trash guys. It helps them. But I've been over to Bourbon the last Friday of every month, and they don't have no problem with it. Yeah, it's definitely something we can look into. I know okay. it all comes down to cost. Well, it shouldn't cost that much. Well, that's up to there again. That's up to the trash people. Right. Really, but. but I and I uh, I bowl with a guy that works for the trash in Harvard, and he said it'd be a good idea. Well, it's something for us to look into. We definitely will check okay. into it for everybody. And know what else did you have? Okay, uh, I got a problem with the barking dogs. <laughs> and uh, Ray Shepard's daughter lives right next to me. And they get out every morning and they bark. My two dogs stays in the house till I take them a walk. It's like 6 o'clock in the morning or something like that. And another thing, I get power with freaking cats. Mm -hmm. Coming on my porch, smelling the place up. And a lot of it's got to do with by, uh, Brian uh, Byron Beard. He is right next to me. You know who it is. His roof spin out. Supposed to be fixed two years ago. Got a tarp on it. I think the house is about ready to fall down. Nobody said anything about it. Nobody can do anything about it. Okay, with the barking dog, there is a noise ordinance and a nuisance ordinance. You can, if I'm speaking correctly, Barry, there is that you can call a police officer and they can come down and they can be ticketed for that. And they can. Well, I had an incident one week, week ago Monday. You know where the church is on Beach Street, mm -hmm. that White House Catacombs. Okay, they got a they got a boxer mixed or whatever, mixed twice now. Last year, I was walking my dog on the, on, the, 
on the east side of the sidewalk, <coughs> and the dog got loose and almost killed the dog. Now he done it twice, he done it again the week ago Monday. I went to the cop uptown, and he was supposed to talk to him. I don't know if he gave him a ticket. Right now they keep the dog inside, but I ain't gonna guarantee he's gonna stay inside the house. If I if I had a gun, I'd have killed it. What's, I mean, that's all we can do is you, know, you got to go through I the mean, channels. I, There's nothing else I can do. I mean, my, my dog is tagged on the lease. His dog was loose, and all at once he come along and lunged at him. Lucky I got a, a stick and I pick up cans, and I hit him with it, and he finally ran. Then when I walked back uptown, he was coming after me, but he went back over the White House. Well, that's like I said, you, you just have to go through the process with the police department. Yeah, but the police don't do that. No, that's the that's why you follow you through to, and you double check with them. You need to keep, hold them accountable. It's your tax dollars that pay their paychecks. Yeah. So holding them accountable, we only meet once a month or twice a month. I know that. So, I mean, I know. Well, we have no problem back but that up, be, but uh, holding people accountable. Would that be 217 North Michigan? Or the White House, California yeah. from the church? Probably. Probably. There was a ticket written for that. Yeah. Well, he, uh, the cop said he gave him a ticket last year. He done the same thing to the dollars. There was a ticket written there at that address, 425 of 19, for a dog running loose. Yeah, that's the same one. North Michigan or South Michigan? Be South. South, South Michigan. Right. It's 300 yeah. South Michigan. Okay. That's the address. And I think but, there was, uh, was uh, okay. you know, there was a dangerous dog that was not registered. Uh, Correct. 300 South Michigan was given right. a verbal warning. Well, it makes the second time they done it, but you know, it seemed like it did no good. A lot of times, a lot of times the dog is chained up and he barks all the time. I know he's chained up, but that time he wasn't chained up. He come across and lunged at my dog. You know, you know what am I supposed to do? They didn't, they didn't kill my dog? No. No. You know. Well, it's like. Dylan's just saying, you know, you, you got to hold them accountable, so. Right. And luckily it wasn't my uh, other dog. My dog is, the other dog is uh, a husky, female. And I imagine my dog is probably tore him up. Okay. Duly noted. Well, like I said, all you need to do, you need to follow up the police officer okay. and see what happened. And as far as the roof, I don't know if you read the minutes from a couple meetings ago or the newspaper that the town is this year is cracking down on a lot of them well, we, have, we have a lot of things that we've let and i said we've let go i'll take i'll take a lot of responsibility right. hoping that people will take their own responsibility and take it on themselves right. and it's not happened and it's not happened and it's not happened and, and, and go. we now have the resources to enforce these right and we're, we're going to do that, and so then, that's where we're at. And you, so. go, you know where Memorial Park is, and mm -hmm. the stop sign, you go right across Mission Street, stop sign, stop sign, you go right around the, around the corner where the railroad, rail, railroad stuff is, that house right in the corner right there. There's nothing but trash. You know, I mean, I don't mind living in Argus, but I like to have a pretty nice town. I mean, I keep my yard nice. Believe me, like I said, we're, yeah. it was said right in and, and people that are enforcing it, they've got a list along that if they started tomorrow, they'd probably be all year. Oh, I know that. Ever, but we are working on right. that. And me. one other thing. Yep. I heard that if, if you have water problem in your house and the, the town won't come in and fix it, now why is that? Go ahead. What, like what water problem? You know, if... The horn? The, yeah, the meter. They won't come in and fix it. Why not? That's what you get paid for, and that's what we pay for. Not for the meter. If the meter's broke, we'll fix the meter, but we don't handle any plumbing. Huh? We will fix the meter if it's broke, but we don't handle any plumbing. Why not? Because <laughs> it's inside That's not our responsibility. The meter's ours, but all the plumbing is yours. And if we if we touch it and it starts falling apart, it's your personal property and it holds the town liable. Well, for as long as it's a, as long as it's a mineral property, 
but it's the owner's no, property. property. It's a private property. Right. We, we as a municipality don't want to hold our workers accountable for personal plans. Then we don't want the liability. <clears throat> right. We don't want that liability. If the people got a problem and it messes up, they should have uh, insurance to take care of it, which they do. But that's not our responsibility as town employees to fix that problem. We, the, the only thing that's the town's is the meter. That is it. The plumbing from the from the tap into your house and from the other side of the meter. Those are all your responsibility. The meter is the only thing that the town's responsible Never for. Never that <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's, that's the way it's written. I mean, that's right, bullshit. You know, <laughs> I, hate to, Thanks. I hate to say language, but, but that's, yeah. that's bull. Anyway, yeah. that's been that way since, and I've lived here 62 years, and I don't think it's ever been any different. Well, that's wrong. You know, you better, better think twice to change that. Okay, we'll go down to the next row, because I know all 60 are here for the same thing. So who wants to speak first? And we're just going to let you talk to Derek Kip on this one. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead, Mark. I can see your eyes. Last July, you guys started the sewer project out there by us. We were all sent a letter from the town. Is everybody on the board aware of this letter? It's dated July 18th. Yes. Are you aware of the contents of the letter? Are I you going to honor that? I can't that? read it word for word, so if you would like to read it word for word. You can see this? Yeah. Yeah. The Town of Vargas would like to make you aware of the sewer lines that are being installed in your area. And if any time your septic fails, for ordinance you will be required to tap into the sewer line. If you have any questions or concerns, please, con please contact the clerk's office. Are you going to honor that letter? If at any time your septic fails per ordinance, well, ordinance states that you have to hook onto it within 90 days of the sewer being put on there. So you sent that letter out not knowing that this other ordinance was the one that should have been in effect? It's only been in effect since 97, the way I look. 97. And you sent this out last year. And you're telling me this whole board is unaware of an ordinance that's been on the books for 20 some years? No, I'm not unaware of it. It was just never enforced. That's what well, we're doing. Why send now. this letter off? But it's the same, no, or again, do you guys want to speak on this? Because I'll, if at any time your septic system fails per ordinance, you will be required to tap into the sewer line. Well, that's a general statement in my book. That, yeah, okay, if, it, if your sewer fails, you must tap into it. Right, I understand that. But now that it's been put out into your sewer area, the ordinance says that you must go on to it. Why tell us this? Derek, you want to jump in there? You're the legal person well, on how you I'm work. honestly not familiar with the letter. I've not seen that. I don't know anything about the letter. So I, I do know anything about the ordinances. And yeah, the ordinance has been around for quite some time. Well, you referenced an ordinance there. What ordinance is that? I don't know. That's why the letter doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, yeah, it came, came from the town. You, well, you, you were aware that it came from the town. So it says that at any time the subject yeah. fails, right. per ordinance, you'll be required to tap into the line. Okay, it hasn't now, failed. I'm not sure exactly what that means when it says per ordinance and I didn't write the letter. What I can tell you is that there is an ordinance that talks about if the, if the sewer becomes available that you have to tap into that. And that's probably the most recent letter that you got. I don't have a copy of that one with me right now either. Um, but that is based on the ordinance. So you're saying you aren't going to honor your word that you sent us there, that that's all null and void? Well, it's not my decision to begin with, but I am going to say that I'm, again, not certain what this means if the system fails per ordinance. I haven't looked at the ordinance to see what it talks about when okay, it says who, who the system fails. Who wrote the letter? That would be my office. So we're, we were probably told to send out letters, mm -hmm. and we yeah. probably drafted that yeah. letter. I, I can't tell you. You know, we waited 40 years for you guys to put the sewer system in. A lot longer than that. A lot longer than that, but I'm saying 40, because we built out there in 64. And there was no rush by you guys to put a sewer system in. But now, all of a sudden, we've waited 40 years or better 
and you're telling us we're going to hook up in 90 days, your word is not worth the paper it's written on. Amen. And this ought to be told to the whole county because this town is not growing. And there's a good reason why it's not growing because you guys' word is nothing. I've been here a long time and I've owned a lot of, we've owned a lot of property in this town. And we've had businesses. And we have stepped up every time. But this board demanding this is not stepping up. We have systems out there that work. And until they fail, we've been told that we are not going to be hooking up. Now, I don't know why your word is not good. But I think if you guys don't back us up on this, and there's only four or five of us. Is that going to break the town? You seem to have other projects that you can do, but is that dollar amount going to break you guys up if we don't hook up to the sewer systems needed? It's not hard to watch. If we had problems, yes, we would be willing to hook up, but it's been our cost up to this time and I think it's time you guys think about this. I've been out there 54 years and I've never had the first problem with our sewer system. Well, I think personally the first thing to look at is, <clears throat> this is the first I've heard of this. Um, I mean, well, I, I miss it. I miss it. I miss it. Nobody miss, knows what the other hand's well, doing. Well, and that's exactly what we're trying to correct here, right? Well, you don't correct it on our back. I mean that, that's not that's not that's not anyone's purpose here, okay? That's never been at least our purpose. But um, I know specifically, personally, I mean, standing from the fact that you folks have been there for so long and been waiting. I mean, unless it's a state statute, you know, enforcing some kind of sanitation rule. I mean, I. I mean, that, that's where we, we lean on our, our superintendent who knows the state statutes on sanitation uh, um, to a certain degree. I don't know them all the time. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. But let's go back. I mean, there was blueprints on this I found twice. It was supposed to be done in the early 90s and the late 90s. Unfortunately, it never got done. You know, we got it done. Um, one of the residents out there did have a septic fail. Even back in the 90s, it was supposed to be done. So. I understand your complaints. And what um, did you tell me out there more than once? What, what was that? You know, you're going to have to hook up unless your system fails. And, and that, and right that there told me. And that. that was what I thought too. So, and if I made a mistake on that, I apologize. Um, that was a big mistake. Well, if you if you folks were obviously told wrong, the remedy is to fix it and not enforce not enforce that the charge. I don't have a problem with that. That's how I personally feel. But I know but, the rest of the council it isn't completely on board. I'm not sure, but. I mean, if you were told one thing and it obviously is another, there, that needs to be a remedy. It needs to be you should not have some to hook up until our septic system fails. Okay, back, uh, let's back up a minute. Marla, I kind of take offense because I've never lied to you. And you know, what? I've never lied to you, and you guys know that. I'm talking about right now, George. Don't I'm not, go back. I'm not lying to you, but what I'm going to go back to here and. Back in 97, I'm going, to, I'm going to back up there. Okay, in 97, I didn't have a whole lot to do with it. I didn't have anything to do with it 22 years ago. This is a letter from Marshall County Health Department. This is what we're basing this on with our ordinance. I mean, we just didn't come out of the blue and, and say, we're going to handle you guys because, believe me, that wasn't, that's not our, especially me, it's not my thought. It's not anybody's thought up there to throw this out at you because if I was out there, I'd be, in this, I'd be right there with you. But I'm up here now. So what I'm trying to get at is, is they had a site, a temporary repair permit for out on State Road 10. They issued the permit with an attempt to give the Holdsworth a temporary fix to his problem. However, due to the fact that there are other homes in the area that are on septic systems, and all these homes are on private wells, there should be a long-term fix to the problem. Sewers. When we met with you, this was a homeowner the other day, you presented a possible addition to Argus sewer system that could accomplish this. That was the health department with Jerry Becker, okay? 
We feel that in order, we, the health department, feel that in order to protect groundwater from possible contamination in this area, <coughs> should be sewer, sewered as soon as possible. Well, there it is 22 years later. That's right. When the sewers have been extended to this area, all residents must be mandated for connection according to your ordinance's timetable. So in 97, the health department was aware of our ordinances that said within 90 days you will hook up. This is the health department saying this. <clears throat> they'll also take this time to state that our department idea that extending sewers to this area will provide services to the homes already incorporated in a town of Argus. However, the main reason we are requesting that you make this project a priority is to remove the potential for further groundwater contamination or health hazards, pond sewage slash. And this is from the Indiana Department of Environmental Management. Now, was the ball dropped? Absolutely. I have no, I, I, I can't even say who to blame it on. Okay, I, I mean, I can't, we can't take that responsibility because we didn't drop the ball. This is just me talking because no. You, you're responsible. You're the, you're in now we are now. responsible. That's yes. exactly right. Exactly. And here, and we the thing is, you sent a letter out last July that. telling us one thing, and you had to be ignorant of the ordinance 21 years old. I would say we weren't. I'm not going to say we weren't. And the worst no. part is, you give us a whole 90 days to do this. There's another issue. You turn around and, and we annex this, and you had 36 months to get it done. You didn't do it. 40 plus years. And all of a sudden, we got 90 days. And now it's an emergency. Randy, go ahead. I want to bring up go ahead. Go ahead. the fact that our neighbor across the street from us, her husband just died Friday. Right. She is not in any position to even think about something like this right now. She hasn't even gotten her letter yet. She doesn't know anything about it. She does. Well, she does now, but yeah. And I think that should be... The, the time frame, the time frame is just not good for anybody. Well, there's nothing says that we can't, as a board up here, amend this and and make it a year. I mean, that's there's no nothing says you can't do that. Yeah. I mean, the time frame we we understand that, but obviously this made everybody aware of this. You know, I'll take the blame if I screwed up. I mean, that's. Just, I don't think you screwed up. I think what you've not done. Is, is thought reasonably about property. your time frame. And now then, that we're all set with good systems, and you're making us do away with those? Now, are we, by any legal aspect, with our ordinance and that letter that states from the Indiana Department of uh, Environmental management, I guess, is my question. Now you mean the state uh, Department of Health from the county? Yes. That letter? Yes. Okay. What about it? We can change our ordinance. It says as long as their septic system is good, then they can. Then they have to have gone to it. Sure. We can change that. Okay. So, is it cut in stone right now? No. That would be. We could say that. Go ahead, Jamie. I think um, I saw an ordinance. It's, it's been a while ago, but when Colonial Estates was done, some of those homes out there that already had existing septics, they were grandfathered in that until their septic failed, they didn't have to hook out. That's right. And I may have told the, these people that the same thing, okay. knowing that that ordinance was out there. So, And I made a mistake on this, too. Well, that's, 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 that's why we're here to rectify this. Let's, let's hold on, not be confusing this, because there's a difference between state statutes, local ordinances, which the town of Argus has enacted, and just a letter stating that the board or the, the town council will or won't do a certain thing or take a certain action, okay? And we don't have any authority, nobody on this council has any authority to do anything about state statutes in terms of what's required or what's not required, okay? So that's just a non-starter. But I'm not aware that anything concerning whether it's septic, whether it's sewer, falls under the authority of any state statute that says that it's the Indiana legislator saying you've got to hook up to a sewer, you've got to do this. I'm not aware of that. I am aware of the of the ordinance that the town's passed some odd years ago that's been on the books for, for many, many years, and that's the authority for this. 
And I think from what I'm hearing Jamie say, it may even be something different yet. It may be a letter that was circulated to various owners out in Westview, colonial uh, states, that maybe permitted them or, or granted them some kind of an exception to the ordinance. And if, if the time frame that the ordinance specifies, the 90 days is the problem, again, I think that's where George is saying, maybe that's something that the town could work with you folks on. And the town, yes, would have the authority to do that. So if, if that's the, the real problem here, the real issue, then yes. Now, the real is issue is we got good septic systems, and if they did it in colonial states, why can't we do it? I'm, there's no, I, I'm, that's I'm, a question. I'm not arguing that at all. That's why we're, that's where we're that's trying to say we're here. We're, we're that's going why we're glad you're here. We're looking to push towards getting this situation fit for you folks and the future. This is this is in, 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 in defense, let me say one thing, guys. I've only lived in this town since 1970, so I, a lot of you have been here a whole lot longer than me. You've seen a lot of things. Here's the one thing I want you to notice, kind of, though. Back in 1970, I can remember there was nobody in this town to do anything. Everything had to be done, had to be hired out. Had to, it seemed like nothing was done. The last few years, especially this last four years that I've been on the town council, we've tried to grow. Now, we've made some mistakes. Sometimes growth causes mistakes. You know, we've tried to improve the town. We've tried to make it right. But taking away your freedom of you having your own septic system, unless it's a law, opposed to the government that we can't help. That's not, we're not trying to do that. We're not going to do that. I know people live out there in, in uh, colonial states. They've got good septic systems. Some of them homes only been out there 14, 15 years. Some of them less than that. Everything works good. They're like you. They don't want nothing changed. I understand what you're saying. So the only thing I'm asking is don't be quite so hard on us. Some of us are new and some of us these things were done, a lot of this stuff was dropped by people in the past that didn't, I don't know, they didn't have a vision, they didn't seem to care, they just done their thing and let the town grow. Well, we've tried to make this town, there's people now that's got a vision for a, a town that we don't have, we've never had, and we want to see it grow, we want to see it develop, we want to see things happen, but we don't want to infringe on your rights either. So, you know, don't, don't chew us out quite so bad, but understand we're not going to take away your rights. We're going to look into this, we're going to look deep into it, and we're going to find out if, if we can find that you are allowed to keep them septic tanks for another hundred years, I don't care how long you keep them, then we'll let you do it. We're not going to come out there and just start digging holes in your yard. That'll never happen. I'll personally see that that'll never, we're not just going to dig just to be digging. But if our law says that we have to give you some time, then we can decide on how much time. This poor lady that her husband passed away, but why, I can understand, she needs some time to think about what she's doing, maybe she even wants to sell her house and move, we don't know. So, you know, it's, when, I lived, when I moved here in 1970, I lived over in a, uh, what do they call that addition, lived on the other side of the tracks over there. They came in, and I, I had a, I went off of Grove Street, no, it was off of Albert Street, where I lived then, where Paul Stearns lives right now. They came in, and we had a septic tank there, and next thing I know, they came down that alley, and they says, you're going to hook up to our town sewer, and you're going to dig up your septic tank. Well, we did, and it cost, it, it was real cheap back then, 1970, it's only like a couple hundred bucks, but it was, it was real cheap, and we did it, and we took the septic tank out and everything, but I, you, you know, I never quite thought it was right, but it was what it was. So again, have some patience with us. Don't understand again, we're not out here to take things away from you and take your rights away from you. So let's, let's. I have something I want to say if you don't mind. Take please. this under consideration. Yeah, I'm very strong with it, but like I said. We're not I, I apologize for all of you having to come in here. I have only been on the board for a short, short time. Uh, I think the bigger question is here, that we have a letter that was sent to them last July right. that contradicts everything that we talked about last meeting and passed. And I, for one, had if I had known about this letter that he had, I would not have voted the way I did because I think we own up to our word of what we did. That's my position. And I would say, from my experience on the board, 
we've been uncovering things from the past, and yeah. we uncovered this. Speak up, please. I mean, Speak we, up. we're uncovering issues from the past and having to go back and correct things. We're not trying to make it hard on you, but things have been done in the past that weren't always done correctly. Right. And we've run into a number of those things. And perhaps we made the wrong decision here, but we will look at this. Like I say, it's not us individually that is trying to do this, but we have found a number of things from the past, and we are trying to get things corrected and done properly. The only and thing we voted on was to waive the tap fees. We didn't vote on anything else on that last three, but you're saying right. you voted well, on it. The great the discussion was about enforcing the ordinance. Yeah, it was enforcing the ordinance. Yeah, enforcing the ordinance, but that was as given. I mean, that's not a, that yeah, wasn't a vote. Right. The vote was to, to do the talk, but I, I'm with you guys. We can, we can get out of this, we can go into our regular meeting, and we can grant, we can change the ordinance. I mean, you know, have it rewritten, put your letters on hold for another 90 days, and we go in and rewrite it, and the ordinance comes out and says when your septic tank fails, then you have to be put off. Right. That can be done. Not impossible. Not, Not impossible. impossible. Mm -hmm. and, we'll be, and, and we will look we into this. I appreciate that. Listen, we want you to be happy. That's the whole thing. And we will look into this. We're not going to drop them. This has been kind of a problem I saw over the years. It seemed like everybody talked about doing things and the ball got dropped. It got to here and it went no further. We have tried in this last four years. And you look around and see the projects. You see the things that's being done. There's more things being done in the last four years than there have been in like 10 years. And we want to keep this going, but we want to do it the right way. Our job is not to come and okay. step on nobody's toes. We're not, we're not here to, bop, to take anything away from you. So give us some time, be patient with us, and, and give us a chance to redo this. Again, you know, it, the ordinance, the way I understand it too, if you go home and your septic tank goes <coughs> out on the ground and they find it's cracked or something like that, then our hands are, are and so are yours, you know. We can't do nothing about that. But okay. you've got an excellent one. Your leach bed works good. You get somebody to come and pump the thing out every couple of years, however how often they do it, then that's fine. There's no con ground contamination. There's no health problems. All right. Go ahead. Reinvent the wheel here. It will definitely be looked into, and, and we're glad you came, because this is what we want. If nobody comes up here and speaks up, then we just... It goes. Yeah, just but, tell us there's a problem. I'm glad you're all listening anyway. But, but there again now, you know, in four years it can change and some other, but I can come in here and say, nope, we're going to change it again. So there you go. Yeah. You got you got that option, but we're not here to like, we're, 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 so we're here to do that. But we do appreciate you guys coming in and giving your concern <clears throat> because I would be right there with you if I was on that side of the table. Yeah. So. It will be looked into very strongly. Thank you. And our letter's on hold until further notice. And you'll, we can't, I can't say that till we go into the meeting and we vote on it. Until so further notice. Mm -hmm. so, After your meeting is what I'm saying. Yeah, so if there are any other citizens input on anything else, <clears throat> if not, then we're gonna run into attorney report real quick. Actually, yeah, let's go attorney's report so we get this out of the way. Not a whole lot tonight. Just um, to let you guys know, I did take a look at the bylaws from EMS. Um, just a couple of small things that it's not critical, but I did send an email to Sarah uh, Monday, and again, just a couple minor things, and it's maybe just for clarification. It's not at all fatal to the bylaws. Other than that, I think they really all I know about EMS, which isn't a whole lot. Um, it's certainly better than anything that we had, which was nothing. So um, I think it's definitely a step in the right direction. Also, just to let you know, I did take a look at, I'm sorry, completed the um, this fitness membership agreement and sent that to Sarah to let her take a look at as well. And again, just haven't heard back from her yet, but that thing should be pretty close to being uh, ready to utilize as well. That's all I had to report. Any questions for Derek? Make a motion to accept the attorney report. A second. Motion is second. Any other discussion or questions for the lawyer? Not all in favor, favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries.
let's jump right into this new business since these people are here they may not want to say here through the rest of the meeting um, is there a motion to put their letter on hold till we revise the ordinance I'd like to make a motion to put the um, mandatory hookup in 90 day letter that was sent to the residents of Woodlawn Trails on hold until we further decide and change the ordinance or do what we want to do with it second there's a motion to second all in favor Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. All we, right. Um, we can leave now. You can leave now. <laughs> can Thank, you Thank you for coming. Thank you, though. But you're welcome to stay. Yeah. Thank you for listening. All right. Thank you, George. Yep. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. I don't need another weapon. <laughs> we go back a long, long way. See ya. See ya. Uh, resolution 2019-4 grant program. I move to table these so that we can rewrite them a little bit. There's a motion. Is there a second to table resolution 2019-4 to go over the tweak the program again? I'll second. Is there a second? Is there any other discussion? Not all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. I'm opposing. I was ready to go with it. Ordinance 2019 5 golf cart ordinance. <laughs> all right. Sean, you got two versions of a golf cart ordinance. The one was the last one you sent me. I know the one you wanted to see, I think, has the reference to the original equipment manufacturer. I'm not sure what's in your packet, but you've all seen she both versions. She it. Okay. Um, so at any rate, I've tried to separate and create two separate ordinances from the one that we had. Um, it really makes a whole new section of the uh, code. I just see something with the title, so if we do anything with this, we'll just want to do it on a first reading. Um, nope, I'm sorry, that's not. We're good. We're good. Um, <laughs> All right. Got too many copies. In front it of is, you. and I can't say will anything else come up with this. No, I'm not going to promise that at all. Um, but I do think that we're better than we were when we passed this thing back in I think it was February. Um, so again, it does a better job uh, regulating both the golf carts and the. Uh, for vehicles, the things that we avoided, the things that we didn't include were the, the application of any kind of a fee. Um, and we also make sure that we, we don't have to necessarily possess the driver's license. We do have to have one. Um, and we've also just defined golf cart and we've defined all for a vehicle a little bit differently so that we're not requiring the addition of the accessories. And those are the major changes. I'd like to make a motion to pass ordinance number 2019-5, rewriting the golf cart ordinance for Donaros. Second. On the first reading? On the first reading. A motion and second to pass ordinance 2019-5, golf cart ordinance on the first reading. Is there any discussion? Can we amend that and waive the rules and just get it out of the way? You can retract your motion. I'd like to retract my motion <laughs> and then move to approve ordinance number 2019-5, rewriting the golf cart ordinance and waive the rules, pass on all three reads. Is there a second? I second. There's a motion to suspend the rules and pass ordinance 2019-5 on all three readings. Any other discussion? Not all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Sign it, pass it down before we forget. Ordinance 2019 6, UTV ordinance. Make a motion to suspend the rules. Pass all three readings, ordinance 2019-6. I second. There's a motion and a second to pass ordinance 2019-6. Suspend the rules on all three readings. 
Any other discussion? I still say we're opening a can of worms. I still think this is an issue. Okay. Open for a vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Motion carries four to one. Resolution 2019-5, Economic Development Director. And yeah, there's 15 different ways you can go with this thing. I mean, um, this is something you can add to it, you can take away, you can scrap it all together. But I think it's a start. So, do I have a motion to uh, accept this? Is there one wording change? You can just pass the resolution right here, despite the wording changes. With the wording changes, yeah. Uh, I just can't remember the specific wording. The full console instead of it, exactly. Yeah, right here where it says, uh, where were we at? The Session. executor of the Argus Town Council, annual basis of an executive town council, executive of the town council, first meeting of January. So instead of being just the executor's just the town council, it would be the town council's appointment. Okay. Is that what you were saying? Yeah. I'll make, a uh, I'll make a motion to pass resolution 2019-5, the economic development director's position, uh, with the correction of, in section one, by the executive to be removed and just be the town of Argus. Full council, I apologize. <laughs> Is there a second? I'll second. Motion and second to adopt resolution 2019-5 with said changes. Any other discussion? Not all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Lisa, please. Another old business. I have something that we need to talk about. We're working on this, and I understand it takes time to work on these things with these grants for our programs or anything else, but we have a local business that has applied and um, needs our help now. I would like to entertain a discussion on possibly granting them some of the money or doing something for Log House restaurant up there so they can work on getting their move made by why we still work on this wording of these programs. I'd like to have everybody's thoughts on trying to do something to help them. I was assured we're not doing this program for a log house. This is a program for the town. Well, and I, keep I understand like that this Susan. is being pushed. Every time we come in, we have this information, and then we have the resolution in front of us. Like we have a workshop, and the resolution is here to pass. I just feel like we're, this is being pushed, and we're just handing them a check. Well, right now we don't have anything in. Right now, you didn't vote on it. We didn't right. vote on that. So we have nothing in place to back us up. That's the thing. Well, in my mind, we should never have to fill out an application when we're ready to accept it for consideration. It wasn't a complete application. You were. That was my fault. I checked your first meeting when everybody was talking positive and went in that avenue because we were in a rush. So. Well, Sean, I, I talked to Robin up there the other day. I stopped in and talked to her and, I, and she told me some of the things and how much they're, they're running to this thing with the hood. Uh, if you ever dream the Department of Homeland Security grants you a permit for an exhaust hood. Yeah, that's what they're waiting on. That's where that comes from. And they're needing some money and they're needing it going. We have no restaurant in this town. They are, they are it. If we lose them, I don't know. I, I'm like you. I, I, they need some help, and we need to help them. I don't want to see the restaurant 
and it isn't just them, but it's it's for the town. That that's a great asset for the town because it's going to be a better restaurant. It's going to be open more. It's going to offer more, and I think it's going to be a good thing. So you know, are we going to just let them struggle along, or are we going to help? Them? Before anything, I, I'd like to see a type one. How desperate are the need? They need it. You know, that kind of thing. Because this is just added pressure with some of this other stuff that we definitely have to get, get on the ball rolling with, including the, finishing the actual application itself. I think we're setting a dangerous precedent if we just hand the money. We don't even have a program in place. I think that's. It's not the structure that I'm worried about or the, the record keeping. It, it's more or less the, the morality behind it. You know, or how badly is this really needed? Is this something that we, is worth dropping all our regular routine checks for? I don't know. That's that's how that's how far I I, I go with it. You know. But I don't know. I don't think, I'm not too sure. I don't know much more about it. What's going on? Without the program, in without a program, I can't see how we can just kill the money. I have to. Be, I have to be. I understand why, and I understand how it happened. Well, and you could, but and I that's why I didn't come and just request that when I got that initial call, mm -hmm. and we started working on that. I feel there should be the program. I could have just come and said, here's the issue we have. I, yeah, you could have done that. It's been the one time, but that doesn't set the right precedence. Uh, but in the other term, I, I don't know. I can't answer. I've not talked except to the, when he calls me and wants to know where it is. and. And she says, you know, they, they want to be out there by May 31st. Yeah, and I mean, I, the updates he is, I know there's been some thinking it's not this way and it's all hearsay. Where this is left with him, until this passes, this is not a guaranteed event. So he may think that, oh, we got this going, he's going to get it, but he is clear. In fact, both sides are clear on both of these. Can we talk about this Monday no. night then? Something mm -hmm. to bring up over there? No. Are you going to say that? Well, Lord, my thinking too. Huh? Can you hear me? Not us. He said if you show up. If I show up, I'll, unless I'm dead, I'll be there. Okay. But I get busy every now and then. You get busy too. But we can talk about it Monday night. Okay. Well, yeah. I guess. I'm, I'm okay with that. I just don't want to drop the ball on that. I mean. Well, there's four of us here. But I, well, I'm like Suzanne, I can't see just. We, we got it. We're, we're trying to get something in place and to jump over before it's in place, I think would be a bad idea. Yes. Okay. I don't disagree. I, mean, I, I just don't want to drop the ball. I think that'd be good. We'll let it go. All right. Um, new business, Stellar. Sure. Sure. I believe we're here. Smiling. We're here. <laughs> Get your readers out there, John. <laughs> Sorry. I'm Sorry, John, we're out of time. Old business. <laughs> I think it's a great time to live in Argus. I'm just going to make this comment before I get started. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff going on. Somebody said it earlier. Hey, and not all of it's going to come to fruition, but as a group and as a community, we're talking about things. We're talking about advancement. We're looking at different things. That's important. Okay? No better time to live in Argus than right now. So Mandy and I are here on behalf of Norfolk County Stellar this year, and uh, as you know, we're one of the finalists for the Marshall County Stellar. Um, Marshall County was um, selected as a finalist, finalist in the Marshall County Crossroads as a collaboration of leaders from across the region that engages with and inspires our communities to connect, collaborate, and create high-quality hometowns. This will be done by creating healthy, livable, thriving, and sustainable communities that provide current and future residents of all ages, races, genders, the best hometowns in the Midwest to live, work, and play. That is our mission statement, okay? This year's um, Stellar Initiative is creating a quality of life plan along with a regional development plan that is going to guide our decision making about projects and priorities, okay? Both plans will focus on creating high quality hometowns. Um, the platform which we launch these plans will be based on the collaboration and on public engagement. And uh, right now, just so you know too, we're thinking about putting a public engagement 
booth at the summer festival. So citizens will be able to, Marshall County residents actually, will be able to go out and get input and collaborate on projects and things that they want to see in the community. The quality of life plan will address the quality of life issues related to the following pillars. Quality of place, investments and strategy, housing, health and wellness, the arts and culture, education, skills training, leadership, capacity building, workforce retention and attraction, and industry development and entrepreneurship. The regional plan of Stellar focuses and prioritizes projects that are primarily funded by OCRA, INDOT, and IHDCA for housing. Argus has uh, submitted three projects, the first one being Parkview Meadows housing development um, on 16th Road. And that is really the forefront, one of our major projects. Um, also, we have submitted Pond Park, which is going to be done in collaboration with what has already started through our parks department. And uh, project number three is connectivity, sidewalks, and walkability, and walking paths through the town. Primarily, this would focus more towards phase one, two, which would be Indiana Avenue, Clinton Street, the fairgrounds, and Pond Park. So patrons and citizens would have access to move from one park to another park and to the new community center um, that's being built in the fairgrounds. So those are kind of our big three projects. Um, each community is being asked to, for $7,000 to support the initiative across the county. And that's why we're here tonight. What is the potential dollar amount if Stella is achieved. Oh man, that's a good question. So they changed it this time around. Right. So the winner gets like, I can't remember if it's a double or triple. Is it double? Double? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and it's a large sum of money. <laughs> I mean, it's double, double, double of what? Yeah. Double, double of what? The, well, double of what they gave last, last year. Last year. Oh, okay. It's in the millions. Yeah, correct. It's yes. Like, because they have a million set aside for the three that do not win to be divided out as well. Right. Which they didn't have before. Sure. So that so no matter what at this point we stand to in to do have the money to invest in these projects, whether we win all the way or so to keep our projects on the forefront by investing this get buys us that I'm trying to put that seven thousand in perspective. Yeah. No. So it's so in the millions. Yeah. In the right. millions. I wanted to say in, three, but it's, it's more than. That. It's more than, and I think worst case is three hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. Is the per community is the word? It. It's the minimum. Or, yeah, the minimum, minimum. If you don't get per region, you're yeah. in the top three or four. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Which they didn't have before. That was a change. And we feel that we've got a very strong. Uh, we have a very strong committee mm -hmm. and a very strong plan right now. Moving forward. And they do feel our plan is really strong. I sat with the state last week. You said $7,000? What did we did last year to get this going? Five. Lisa and I had this discussion. I can't remember. It's five. Five. It's five. It's five. It was five. It was five or six. I can't remember. It was five thousand. I think. Thank you. So each community in the county is Seven thousand dollars to get three hundred thirty-three thousand dollars minimum. Is no brainer. Well, and it's pretty good return. <laughs> and if it all comes to fruition, <laughs> what an investment! Good return there, isn't it? Never had one like that. <laughs> and aside from that, the fact that we have some brainstorming going on, we're getting community input. There was a survey done online just recently. We're getting input on what residents want to see in the community, which has been the impetus for a growth of a lot of projects and putting projects on the table. And we have a list of projects on the table. There's a list of projects on the table um, that, that could move from one to the other. So I think, just as I said when I started the conversation, growth is good. Growth is better when you're thinking ahead of the game and putting projects out and putting resolutions out and looking at different avenues for your patrons and your businesses and everybody in the community. And uh, this is a part of that, I think. And, and the Stellar Initiative has made us brainstorm about this community. 
Well, I'd like to make a motion to commit seven, to commit to seven thousand dollars to this Marshall County Seller Initiative. I'll second it. There's a motion and a second to give the seven thousand dollars to our Stiller. Is there any other discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. We'll try to make you proud. You're all talking. We'll try to make you proud. I just smile. You just smile? <laughs> She's the idea generator. She's the politician right there, man. Hey, we have some good stuff um, that is being talked about in resources even moving forward after this to keep some of these projects going that may be smaller than the stellar, which is awesome for our area. CF1 MCD, MCDEC compliance. I guess they followed through. This is <laughs> <laughs> All in favor of accepting the CF1 MCDEC statement. Yeah. Yeah. It means they've done what they said they were going to do as far as the building. So it's the only one, like she said, it's the only one we've got back. It just wants to know if they fulfilled what they said they were going to do. And that's build the building. Well, last year the building wasn't done when they said it was going to be done, but we signed it anyway, so let's... Mm -hmm. Motion? I'll make a motion to accept CF1-1 MCDC form and sign it. Second. Is there any other discussion to accept the CF1 report? Vote all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, Suzanne, you're up for two things. Okay. I'll start with the Walkability Action Institute. Last week, I went to Decatur, Georgia for four days with a group from Marshall County. There were six of us from Marshall County. Well, actually, one was from Troyer Group, one from Maycog, two from Culver, one from Plymouth, and myself. We made up the Marshall County group. There were groups from all over the United States. It was very interesting <coughs> and very educational. Walkability Action Institute is encouraging activity within our communities. It's sponsored by the CDC. I was, one reason I was anxious to go, to me the CDC means disease. Here they're focusing on health. Mm -hmm. I like that idea. They're focusing on healthy communities. Healthy communities need to be active. So they're focusing on being active. And this just piggy banks on what Stellar is trying to do here. It's not just that, though. It's much, much more. And I can't say in just three to five minutes what all we covered. We covered so many different things. Safe walks, you know, safe routes to school. Kids being able to walk to school safely crosswalks being marked, doing walk audits, walking throughout your town, checking the different intersections, the streets, the curbs, the cracks in the sidewalks, the roots that push up things and make it unwalkable. So everyone, whether it's a mother with a stroller, someone in a wheelchair, a walker, everybody has access to the town. Those were just a few of the things. The economics how the economics of the community is affected. If you can walk and get access to your business areas, it improves business. It improves the downtown. When we have empty buildings, if our downtown is more walkable and accessible, those buildings are more likely to be filled. And the businesses that are there get more business. They do better. These things have improved. So there are a lot of different areas that we covered. It was all encompassing. The one statistic that keeps sticking out in my head, the second leading cause of premature death is a sedentary lifestyle. So we need to move. It helps people be healthier, happier, 
and it encourages community. So there are many different things, like I say, we covered. It was four days. All the instructors were excellent. They were excellent, very knowledgeable. And I have a list of resources I would love to share with some of you. And you're going to be hearing me pop up with a lot of ideas and things over time, because there are many things that can be looked at. And one of the first things to me is the school. Just walking kids to school, I looked at the crosswalks. The walks are not well defined. Just paint. Paint can make a difference. They talked about walking school buses. They talked about the kids that walk to school, perhaps being kept or let out five minutes before the other kids so they could get away from all the traffic around the school before all the cars start moving. Just the little things. So there's, those are just a few ideas. Like I say, there were so many things we covered, I can't begin to share everything tonight. But at the task force, a week from tonight, I will have some of my resources and hopefully we can talk further. But it was a week well worth it, and you will be hearing more from us as a team, and we will be connecting with Stellar because it piggybacks right on quality of life. I think uh, part of the Stellar initiative, if I might add, is uh, a walk to school day. I think they're going to have a national walk to school day across the county. Mm -hmm. Coming up and ask every school to participate. In. They have done studies. Kids that walk to school, their attendance is better, they behave better in school, and they're doing a study right now on whether their academics are better. So it is proven that it's worth it to have the kids walk to school. If I could, can I add one more point? Mm -hmm. So sure. it took. So when I started the 10K and the 5K for the scholar sprint, it literally took me five to six weeks to get a 10K course and a 5K course to, to figure out where I wanted to run in the town that was safe, that was visibly appealing, and that runners would come back for. It breaks my heart that we don't have a better avenue that's wooded that people can run through, even on our country roads. But what you said was so important about the curbs, the roads, the, the sidewalks, the crosses, everything is so important. And um, our, our 10K and 5K courses are very good courses. They're very fast courses. They're runner-oriented courses. But they could be a lot better. The even. emphasis was safe and accessible. That was, those were the words we kept hearing throughout. So I get it. I, I get it. <laughs> so it was an excellent, excellent workshop. Okay, the second thing I would like to ask the consul, if on <coughs> Thursday, May 16th, the young professionals would like to use the BNR building between 8 and 9.30. And there would be about 20 to 25 of them if we could allow this without charging them a fee. I talked with the town, and they thought that would work with the lunch that's there. They might bring in meals or the hot food during that time, but. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to explain why we're asking for that? If you'd like to, yes. Sure. Um, yeah. As the founding president of that group, uh, last year we decided that we would like to take what we would call, in essence, a field trip to each of our communities throughout the year to, we were hoping to do it at the fairgrounds, I think originally when we started this, but, uh, and and showcase what a little bit of each town has and take a meeting to that town that makes up Marshall County. Uh, one was in regards to maybe attract some new members that may not always want to go to Plymouth. Uh, two, it was kind of to showcase different things that we have going on or places, locations. Um, and three, it was just to make the young professionals more of a county-wide entity um, by by going out into it together. So, because uh, we haven't we've rotated locations before, but they were primarily still in Plymouth. Other than when the academy does host us every once in a while, so <coughs> we could use this room. Yeah, you could use this. I say you could use this room if you want a different environment, so you wouldn't. Well, I, I mean, we just want to make sure we're hitting every town. That was something that we really were trying, um, just because it, to, like I said, one, attract, I mean, I'm the only one that comes from Argus on a regular basis. 
So to me, bringing them out here to see different things we have going on or talk about it while we're here makes a big difference because you hear about it, but until you're, you know, we're going to Burma, I think we're going to the standard norm in Burma, you know, I mean, we're just trying to showcase different happenings going on and talking about, when we come here, I know we want to talk about the festival coming up for the summer kickoff, which is also the reason why we're doing it that month that we're doing it, so we have plenty of time to promote it. So that is one of the reasons why we're trying to get in May for here. That was why I put it on May's list last year, was just trying to keep us involved so maybe we will get more young professionals coming and bringing their families to our summer kickoff, which in turn makes it bigger, which in turn, you know, keeps growing. And so. the library the room is large enough you can use that too, and there'd be no cost. Um, just let me know where, and I can. Whatever. Get the maps right there. It would be great because. That's. It's um, 20 to 25 people normally. Yeah, yeah. It, it is, and we and what happens is we usually have a speaker or guest. And then we network together. So whatever you need is here. It's a great group of people. It really is, and and it's a group of people that are doing a lot throughout the community, not just in business, but in volunteering and, and really taking a stake of ownership in our county. Oh, Where do you think Mandy would be the best? To this one. I mean, if you. I mean, I don't know. I know we originally were going to try to do the fairground, so that's why we're changing location. If this one works better, we can do this one too. Um, granted. I don't know what parking is better for. So. I just don't want you to get interrupted in case they decide to come early. At the right. DNR. Get the food. Yeah. <laughs> and then, then it's the seating and stuff there. Okay. This, this is much better. Okay. Okay. And plus, if you need anything, you've got it. So, okay. yeah, take this. PowerPoint. Yeah, you got PowerPoint. You'll be all right. Will the parking be adequate? Where's the parking? Around the side here, even. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just see, I mean, just so that way. Okay. I'll just let the go. Do you want you want to respond back to that? Oh, okay. yes. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. Really trying to encompass other places than just Plymouth with our meetings. Good group. Makes sense. Well, anytime you need this room, all I got to do is call. Thanks. I this mean, because during the day, there's usually, unless Jamie's having training meetings or something, it's usually empty. And this is a new, this is a new concept. We decided this at the end of last year, and then I got to pass off my presidency, but um, being a big active members still, that is why we are mm -hmm. doing different field trips to different towns, to all the towns. Cool. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> if there's nothing else, we'll move on to claims. Anybody else got anything? March, May, May 15th. It's seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Yeah. Can we have an executive session? Yeah. May 15th. Oh yeah. For an economic development purpose. <coughs> you said so we're going to list that. You said for the next team. council meeting. Oh. oh, okay. Did you want to do your thing then? No. Well, if you do, do it earlier yeah. than that. We've got one. It's 6.30. Yeah, we've got uh, 6.30. We've already got one that night. Yeah. yeah. Budget workshop. I'll only need probably 15 minutes. So if you want to start with that and then right before. Right. Okay. You just told me you wanted me to do that in the negative session, so. We still want to stay at 6 30 and we can start yeah you guys can start on the other 6 30 at 6 15 or 7 15 if we can break out for 15 minutes that'd be great okay we're on to claims and the total docket for uh, may 1st is two hundred ninety five thousand three hundred ninety dollars and 88 cents the top five claims are as follows number one is the municipal uh, uh, at one hundred forty eight thousand eight hundred and twenty two dollars and sixty seven cents number two is payroll number eight at thirty five thousand three hundred and forty four dollars and fifty three cents number three is anthem at twenty thousand nine hundred and forty dollars and four cents number four is uh, republic services at twelve thousand four hundred and seventy nine dollars and thirty nine cents and number five is marshall county <coughs> dispatch fee at ten thousand dollars um, the top five claims total $227,586,000.63 and they represent 77% of the total docket. I'd just like to make a comment on claim 448, movie screen for the park. The park department purchased a movie screen for the park so that movie night in the park, we've yes. got our own screen now. We don't have to rent one. And plus, 
the pastor of the Methodist Church is a licensed Walt Disney movie short, which you have to have to show Walt Disney movies. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, Val Harley told me this because she works down there. So they can do uh, Walt Disney movies too now because she has the license to show them. There's just looking for whatever projector and some sound, and then that's I know, the rest of it is for years. Yeah, yeah. they just purchased the screen. Right, yeah. And that screen was... It wasn't until you got a lot of ways back then. I was thinking 13,000. Yeah, it was an expensive screen, and they got it for two, so it was a great film. Right, yeah, he's still on it. Okay. Motion to accept claims. I make a motion. The 448 through 498. Second. Is there a discussion? I don't know if there was signal if I was saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Before we jump out of here, we. What? Are you here for some reason? <laughs> well, I'm not sure. <laughs> Sorry. I been, we're going to talk about that outside the meeting. Sorry. Yeah, we, we okay. will do this after your story. Um, we just talked about the ordinance on the sewer thing. So, with that being said, is that the only thing that we would change on that ordinance? I mean, that's the big thing. Well, well, do, do we really change in the ordinance or just do we change the ordinance or in this particular instance? That's what I'm asking. Yeah, you don't have to change the ordinance. Okay. No. You can simply just vote to say that we're going to extend additional time or under certain circumstances and that's reflected in the minutes. That's an official action without changing the ordinance so that whenever this rolls around the next time, it just doesn't happen again. So we can say we're going to allow them to not hook up? Grandfather, then well, you can say that you can say we're going to give them 180 days, or we can say we're going to give them three years, or you can say that you're going to give them uh, until their septic fails to make them hook up to the sewer. Or possibly when the house is sold. All kinds of things, but now doing that is more of a condition, okay, because that's not in the ordinance, Suzanne, so that's not really something that we start to reach. We can't trigger. But we can't trigger that, okay? We could say, well, then we're going to enforce the ordinance. But I don't. I wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, I would either give them a definite time limit, obviously more than the 90 days. I would people that heard that being a problem or an issue. But then, of course, when you see the letter that was sent out, that it says when your septic fails. Um, so I understand that you know that's what they read. That's what they took to heart. I'm more in favor of some sort of a compromise in the middle of that, uh, you know. Allowing them to go from now and put like a 10 year limit on within 10 years they have to hook up or something like that. I mean, that that's kind of where I'm thinking. I would say when there's something fails. Yeah. Something yeah. Something fails. I mean, that, that is what the letter said. Jane, 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 is there any life span on a septic system? No, that you no, know of? No, they have something that doesn't fail. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. 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 Only if someone said it was so it was a four bedroom house. That's what I bet. It's a concrete tank. I mean, you know, it's a concrete tank. Oh, it's a huge deal. Oh, it's a bad deal. So, yeah, because it didn't fail. It was probably two bills. Yeah, the house was built with a three bedroom house and the septic was put in. The house was sold as a four bedroom house. So when the loan come through as a four bedroom house, the septic was no longer big enough to accommodate a four bedroom house. It's not that it failed, it's that the loan wouldn't go through because it was said it was four bedroom instead of three bedroom. So his septic still works. Well, that's why it failed. That means it's failure. That means it's failure. Yeah, those parts on the septic part that it is failed, it'll say due to tank size not being adequate for modern bedrooms. Yes. Because that has changed even in the last couple of years. Yeah, so it's, it's not like the septic plug yes. that it didn't work. You go through that cell mm -hmm. realty, you have yeah. to make sure that... So technically that would not be something that had to be turned into the county because it was still working. So so you, what you're going to open up is those septics may not technically show an issue, but they may not be to standards. And I don't know what you can do. Let's just do the moral thing. I mean, grandfather, their old systems and really right. fail. Yeah. I mean, that was, That's they were told one thing, it was, it was miscommunication. But there's also the a term failing is really vague. Well, yes. the safety of the work, that's one reason. 
the septics are close to the water. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I think, I think that there, I think there should be some sort of uh, well, that time frame. There should right. be some that that is, that's that's a health problem. That was their that. concern. Yeah. That's why they wanted to. Do you think that there that. should be some sort of, I mean, health, yeah. we could be talking 20, 30 years. I mean, don't you think there should be some sort of an inspection that we should, I don't know. I think some kind of health. Well, we need health inspection. We'd have to talk to Chuck or somebody about that. Yeah, I mean, if septic, if septic sanitation is the issue, then get an inspector so we qualify to go check it out before we just go and say, we're going to go and grandfather it or something. We, we, went, to, we went to sell our in-law's house. There was absolutely nothing wrong with the septic, absolutely nothing wrong with the electric, absolutely nothing wrong with the, the well. But because of the way they wanted to get along, we had to move the well 10 feet because it was too close to the septic, and we had to upgrade to a 200 amp service. Right. And there was absolutely nothing wrong with it. But it, it met new standards. But it meant, yeah, to sell the house under those conditions. FHA, USDA, VA, but installment is required that the well, because by state standards, it's 50 feet from all the septic. They're 90 or something like that. It's I mean, the state's 50, but loan's like 90. Um, that just depends on your lender. But right yeah. now, as a minimum, it's 50. And so where they're having issues, though, is if they do have their own room, it's like a new. It's not, and then mm -hmm. you would have to help out. That's what all the big communities are going through right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Granger went through it a couple yeah. years ago. They're Granger. still going through it. They're still paying me. I just said I'm five meetings for this. My main, my main concern, I have no problem grandfathering these in out here. I think it's the moral thing to do. It's the right thing to do by the letters that's written. But I also think we have a moral obligation to at least have some sort of sense of mind that them systems are healthy and they're not I mean, I am concerned about the problem. Yes. I think we have to keep that in mind. So can we have that tested? What? What? I don't know if you can make it again. That's the problem. No. Um, yeah, that's, yeah. It's but a lot more it's, oversight than you really want to get into. I'm not out. Just, I mean, <laughs> grant them their until it fails. fails so have to, the other thing to think about is the time limit or it fails. Right. Um, and I, I get it, it's not what the letter said, but mm -hmm. I, again, at some point, it needs to get connected to the sewer. That's why it's out there. That's why it was put there. You know, it, can we put in there too, give them a year, six months, whatever it is, time for them to continue to waive the tap fees for that time and after that? Maybe that's an incentive to yeah. do. Give them an incentive to try to do it sooner than later. Because there are some that have went on with these sewer districts that have waived or have a lower cap fee if you did it right away, but if you waited after a certain time, it astronomically is different. Mm -hmm. yeah. there, is there, I mean, there, there's a big difference with a lot of them. I mean, it varies, but it's, it's a significant dollar. I like that plan. Set a timeline and, yeah, and set a time. So the letter that we sent out last year is more or less binding them. Mm -hmm. Well, George, I mean, it's called an equitable argument. You pitch it to the court basically say, hey, look, uh, this is what we were told from the town government. And now the town government's changing their mind or trying to do something different uh, 10 months down the road than what they told us before. Um, that it could be a compelling argument. But again, in terms of pushing it to that point, I don't think that's really what, you know, I haven't heard anybody say that they want to enforce it. In 90 days, you got 90 days to get it done. Um, but yeah, I mean, when you, when you say something like that, people can rely on that. And that's, that's the issue here. But, yeah. What about five years? One year waived tap fees. Wave tap fees if they would do it the first year, and they have up to five years to accomplish it. What help? Would that be reasonable? You know there's not going to be a civil considering they were told considering they were told the life of the septic system. Yeah. That's the only that's the only thing I can see bumping into that. Yeah, so you're just saying. giving them a compromise and that's pretty Right, but the, the flip side is, is I don't know, I don't know who these folks are, but I, I specifically know that some of them talked about, you know, we were ready to do this in the 90s. Well, that was 20 years ago, too. Um, Granted, the town should have maybe done something back in the 90s, but it didn't. But now it did, so why would they not be ready now? Um, and then it could be finance issue. I understand. We're in a different stage of life. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I'm going back. I like Sean's idea of 10 years, and then have it in, in 
incentive to do a prototype frame for the wing tax. I'd, I'd like to see a 10 year maximum waiver, and within five years, we'd waive the tap fees. And then after that, we'd double the tap fees or something. I don't know what it would be, but I mean, well, I think that's a conversation. Who's saying in 10 years that our tap fees are not going to be higher anyhow? Right. Because exactly. the price of the product and everything's going to go up. I'm Jamie's sure. not going to be able to do it for the same Well, right. we, we don't do Taps are in. The taps, yeah, taps everything's are ready in. to go. All they got is connect. I mean, I don't think we can have that much to tie in. I don't know. I'd say 1500 bucks to tap it in because it's stubbed out of the house already. We have to stub out. All they got to do is connect it. You know, they can get it off the, the septic, but, you know, if it's working, I understand their argument with that, too. Sure. Hmm. I think where they're coming from is a majority of their cost from that is probably going to come from dissembling their old septic system and yeah. filling it in and that kind of stuff. And they don't want to tear up their yards. Yeah. They got them the way they want them. And probably half of them, their landscaping's not, over this. So that's, the, not, that's not what's important yet, though. I know. Well, yeah, I'm right. just saying that... That's well, then we'll tell them it's not important. Your landscaping is not important. No, no, no. And some of this other stuff. Right. right. I'm just saying that's their mindset. I would think that, you know, I just. Tell them you never like it. That's what it sounds like. I swear. I did. I was like, George, what did you just say? <laughs> 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 so, anyway, we're going to move on this or we're going to let just let them put these letters on hold and we're going to come back to it in a month? Have to that's think about it. Yeah. We need to put the letters on hold for sure. Okay. Well, okay. we already okay. voted to put the letters on hold, so. Yeah, let's well, think this through good. and get it right. Yeah. Guys, it's not junk. Yeah. 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 Is everybody yeah. ready to go home then? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Are you in favor of saying aye? Aye. Motion to carry. Okay.